Nigerians go to the polls to elect a new leader in just over a week. Yes. But there are concerns about the safety of journalists like us out on the field covering the elections. Now, some have likened it to going to a war front. An arrived reporter was caught up in an attack during a PDP campaign rally in Maduguri, the Bono State capital. Well, luckily, she escaped with only a few injuries. And the recent attack on supporters of the Labour Party in Lagos State have compounded fears about the safety of voters and journalists alike. Okay, joining us now is Jonathan Rosen, who is a senior researcher at the Committee to Protect Journalists. The group has been carrying out research and advocating for the safety of journalists uh, worldwide. Very warm welcome, Jonathan, to Newsnight. Tell us, I mean, um, the level of your research so far, the fatalities uh, involved, and uh, why do you think... Uh, uh, Nigeria's uh, political uh, tough poses great danger to the Nigerian journalist. Jonathan? Thank you for having me. You know, the, the examples you gave at, at, at the top of the show there really underscore the dangers for journalists heading into this election season. Uh, analysis done by uh, other organizations have put fatalities over, over the last year in, in uh, election-related violence, um, you know, to over 11,000. And you know that's that's really tragic, but it also underscores the dangers that journalists are going to have to face as they cover the election, which of course we know is important for Nigerian democracy. So, what would be the best way for journalists to protect themselves and even the media organizations? What kind of uh, you know uh, plans do they need to put in place to ensure that journalists who have, have to go out there are not in harm's way? This is a tremendously important question. You know, in recent months, my colleagues and I have been uh, speaking with over 50 journalists and members of civil society from across Nigeria, asking them what their major concerns are heading into the election season. And time and again, they say it's safety. It's their physical safety when they're out uh, doing the reporting that's going to keep Nigerians informed. And, you know, they have plans to, to try and ensure their safety as they do this, this work. Uh, one of the main things that, that uh, respondents said over and over again was understanding a local context. The security situation uh, across Nigeria is, is tremendously diverse. One part of the country is very different from the other. And so when you're deploying, uh, heading into an area that you may not be uh, entirely familiar with or may have not have reported in, in previously, it's important to understand that local context. Respondents also gave us you know, uh, tips on for, for their colleagues, uh, you know, on, on how to prepare for those assignments, having, uh, you know, a, a full phone battery, carrying an extra charge, making sure that you think about which mobile provider is best in the area, understanding concerns about access. These are all things that journalists asked us uh, to, to um, keep uh, top of mind as, as we were preparing our reporting on journalist safety. So, I mean, uh, talking about the general safety, uh, is your research in any way concluded uh, that the African uh, milieu, particularly for journalists, is so arduous that uh, it just might require uh, some form of uh, insurance, particularly during uh, elections like this, where sometimes in some places it can be very volatile? Well, like I said, every every situation is is different and, and should be approached as such. You know, journalists are going to prepare themselves as best as possible. Media houses are working to prepare their staff as best as possible. Um, safety kits are being handed out to journalists. You know, it's it's the preparation uh, that will really pay dividends down the line uh, when you find yourself in a situation. So, really across the board, preparation is is in many cases the best insurance that you can have, knowing how to respond if uh, something does happen. Is there a need for uh, a synergy, some kind of synergy at any level between uh, journalists, media houses, and security agencies? How important is that? 
That, that is important. Of course, journalists are going to be out doing their job. Their priority is to report the news and they need to be focused on that and they should be allowed to focus on that. Uh, but at the same time, of course, security forces have a responsibility to keep journalists safe, to keep the public safe. That's what they've said that their role is during the election. That's what journalists hope that they can provide. Journalists did tell us that they would advise their colleagues to carry, uh, you know, numbers to contact security forces if something did happen. But they also told us that they hoped that security forces would not interfere with their access, would not prevent them from doing the work that they need to do in order to keep the public and the world informed as Nigerians go to the polls. Right, Jonathan, uh, lastly, let me ask you how, you know, Tori the Tovid uh, is uh, your present report about the safety of uh, the Nigerian nay African journalists, you know, in periods like this, and what are some of your recommendations, Jonathan? Yeah, the, the recommendations really are very practical things. The, the first one is uh, I want to have your viewers know, and, and journalists should know, that the Committee to Protect Journalists has an election safety kit that's freely available on our website at cpj.org. It includes a broad cross section of tips and advice, uh, an editor's checklist, um, a, a risk assessment, um, tips for physical safety, psychological safety, which is very important when dealing in stressful situations, uh, and digital safety, because we know that's also a, a dimension of, of coverage. Uh, a lot of journalists told us that they were going to be doing reporting uh, online, trying to reach audiences uh, through online platforms. And so safety there is, is also important. But coming back to those really practical things that journalists told us, again, it is understanding where to go and where not to go uh, and having that local context. There were, there were places across the country that, that editors told us that they would not be sending reporters certain uh, areas where they, they thought it was too dangerous or where they would be relying on a local freelancer who really knew the terrain and could manage those risks effectively. You know, it's, it's understanding those, those specific nuances that's going to allow the journalists to do their job uh, as best as possible. Absolutely, and uh, you can trust that at Arise, we're going to be right front and center of it all. Uh, thank you very much. Jonathan Rosen is a senior uh, researcher at the Committee to Protect Journalists. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs>